basically putting these bets on for a tennis game in Florida. We started with 50 quid or 100 quid and we ended up within an hour with three and a half thousand pounds purely wow. because we were not cheating and it's, it's frowned upon, but... Beat the bookies. Yeah. Uh, can you beat the bookies? Can you beat the bookies? Yeah. A show for... BB BBC, yeah. And it was supposed to be how to beat the bookies, but then we had to change it to can you beat the bookies because we didn't want it to be a, a kind of like manifesto of how to beat the bookies. It was very much a can you beat the bookies. Right. And the premise was um, hour long or however, however long it was. Yeah. And, and and you meeting different characters from yeah. the world of sort of betting yeah. and professional gamblers and, and um, all, all of that. And to see if you can actually profit from gambling. Yeah. Now, can you? Well, again, like the, like the Lionel Messi thing. Spoiler alert: No, um, <laughs> not really. There, there are people. There are people that are, but they're not the people that are in those Labrix adverts. So I was in the Labrix advert years and years ago, and I was a bit naive when I took that gig. But at the same time, I was I needed money, and it was a lot of money at the time. And I'm really fortunate. I don't have an addictive personality apart from food. Like I'll eat food until the cows come home. Mm -hmm. But like with regards to food, drink, drugs, I can like take it or leave it. Not food, drink, drugs, gambling, I can take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. And just be like, you know, I don't get addicted to stuff. So I, I didn't really see it as a bit of a problem. There's a bit of a backlash from a few friends. But like, oh, I can't believe you're doing that. Labrooks. I was like, oh, really? Why? Like, mate, like gambling's not great. I was like, oh, okay. A few years later, the BBC were like, look, would you like to do this um, documentary? And it was really interesting because it is a murky, murky world. It's a really, really murky world. I've done brand deals for betting yeah. apps before. And and, and and to be honest, yeah. like yourself, I didn't truly understand at the time. Like I, I got a bit of kickback for yeah. it. And I, I think it was just ignorance on my behalf that I was like, when, when I got those, but I've done a lot of shit to get backlash yeah. and I'll take it on the chin. But that one, I was kind of like, Oh, I never really thought of it like that. Because yeah. when you're not involved in the addiction and you're not caught up in yeah. it, you don't see it as, a, no, as an and issue. I, and I think it's, and I th you know, fair play to the people for calling us out on it as well. But yeah. going, oh, actually, do you know what? It's not great. And you're going, right, okay, yeah. Because the way in which it's sold to us is just so happy, laughy, laddie. You know, that, that in that advert, I was playing the gut truster, you know, who just trusts his gut, which is literally what I fucking do when I bet. I'm like, well, Grimsby's going to win 4-0 today. Like, yeah. They haven't won 4-0 for four years, but I still <laughs> love that bet on every single Saturday. We got relegated like three days before we got relegated. I was still going, well, we might beat the top team 4-0. Why not? <laughs> yeah. I've got a feeling about it. But I it never spiralled out of control. Um, and it does for a lot of people. And what I was so like grateful for a lot of people that came forward, like you know, we went to Brentford Derby, it was at Brentford, and spoke to a lot of people. And so many people came forward, like, yeah, I've got a real problem. I've got a real, real problem. John Robbins, comedian who we had on as well, he talked about having a real, real problem. Like it's a big thing, and mm. he's dressed up to be like, you know what you're doing. You're a bloody good lad, aren't you? You you can beat us. Like we can't beat you because you make it impossible to beat us. Beat you. Yeah. And what was so fascinating was that. Like it's not a level playing field. Like when if you can get an edge, and a few times we spoke to people who could help you, and an edge is basically if you've got a bit more understanding of the market than the average market does. So for example, there was a guy that bets on reserve football because he's got inside knowledge of who is going to be starting, and he'll basically put a bet on an hour before the reserves have been announced, knowing that actually Kilmarnock are putting out a stronger team than Motherwell oh. and so when the teams are announced the odds get shortened and then he can basically cash out without even a ball being kicked but then the the betting companies are like if they see a pattern em emerging within certain accounts they're like okay this guy's got an edge on us get rid and they basically then limit your account to basically 50p maximum bet that's like mental that. So when we did the court side in, so we had a guy whose name's Joe, and I, I cannot tell you how many messages I get on a weekly basis asking if I've still got that guy's phone number. <laughs> and I'm going, mate, do you think I'd still have his phone number? I, I arrived on a fucking moped today. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I should be arriving on an electric Porsche. <laughs> Um, but he has, uh, he basically hates, hates the bookies. And for anyone that hasn't seen it, he goes to competitions around the world, mainly tennis competitions and court sides. Court side is basically where he's putting a bet on before the umpires put it into their iPad, which goes up to the cloud, which then updates all the betting apps around the world. He obviously can't do it court side because he'll get caught out. So what he does, he has a Bluetooth headset in and he phones someone via Facebook uh, call because that's quicker and uh, there's another person on the other end of the line, and on that in, on the film, it was me basically putting these bets on for a tennis game in Florida. We started with 50 quid or 100 quid, and we ended up within an hour with three and a half thousand pounds, purely wow. because 
we were not cheating, and it's it's frowned upon, but you can basically, he was basically going, call the server. I'll go, server, five to one. I goes, stand by. And you'd hear them, oh, 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 oh. In the background, he'd go, yes. And i press yes, like that. And they go, out. And then you hear them say, out. When they said out, that's the then the umpire putting in, pressing the, um, the, the, the button on the iPad, which then uploads it to Sports Radar, which then downloads it. So I then see like, and we're talking four or five seconds difference here between it going from the cloud down to here and it goes suspended. We won three and a half thousand pounds in an hour and we could have absolutely gone on for another few more hours easily and, and, and kind of like made a lot, lot more money. But then we would have beaten the bookies and that show would have been redundant. Do you know right, what I mean? yeah. And now I went to bed because he was obviously in Florida. I went to bed at like 10.30 at night. I woke up for a, uh, a piss in the middle of the night and looked at my phone and I got an email from Bet365 saying my account's been limited because they'd seen that I'd had an edge. So they just completely were like, no, 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 no. You're not going to beat us. <laughs> so they live for people putting on accumulators with high odds because you're not going to win. Like the chances of you winning is very minimal. They love it when people win accumulators. They app, they glorify accumulator wins because yep. it makes you think that you are going to win when you're not going to win. And so many people, there were a few people that came to me like, your your show is bad. Do you know what I mean, it, you know, you can beat the bookies. They're going, yeah, but if you want to beat the bookies, you have to basically spend your whole life trying to get an edge, working out if it's the dogs or the horses or baseball or whatever it is, and then it overtakes your life. And then ultimately, on top of that, you're not paying tax. Yeah, <laughs> it's tax free. So fair enough, you can beat the bookies, but then you're not funding a school down the road or a hospital. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it was it was a real eye opener. It was a real, real eye opener, and I still do put my bets on my stupid little bets because I, I have a little feeling about it, but it doesn't <laughs> spiral out of control. So, it's, it was a re I really enjoyed doing it. It's that's absolutely fascinating to hear all, all of that. It, we've said that before, haven't we? That social media is one of those things that you only see those massive bets. Like the other day when we were at West Ham, as I left, I was like, oh, someone's just won three and a half grand from a tenner. Yeah. You don't see all these people posting going, just lost a tenner on this. Just lost fifty. You don't see. On this. You don't see how many houses are repossessed. Yeah, you no. don't. You don't mm. actually see a, any. When of I was that. working on, I was working on uh, Soccer AM at the time, and there was a chap that works um, at Soccer AM, uh, you know, in the in the in the department, and um, lovely bloke. I'm not going to mention his name, but he 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 basically said he's remortgaged his house twice because he's got a gambling addiction. He's remortgaged his house twice because he's got a gambling addiction. Fucking hell. So he's got nothing to give to his kids because he's basically, because gambling's got in the way. And um, it's when you hear those stories, it's so disheartening. People committing suicide because they get into this debt. And it's glamorized. You know, I do feel bad for for doing it. And I don't do any more gambling um, ads or anything. And, mm. you know, I, I have a YouTube channel which would lend itself to earn a lot more money if I'd stick William Hill at the front of it or Coral or whatever. But, you know, I don't have that many uh, morals, but I, one of them is like, I, I, I don't want to do do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Saying that, if someone does come in for the Euros and offers me half a million, <laughs> fuck it, I'll do it. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> All right, mate, do I do this? It's half a million quid. I'm like, oh, God. But what was mad, though, is that after I'd done that show, the amount of gambling companies that were still going, hello, mate, do I do this? I'm like, really? are you aware of that show? They're like, yeah, they are. Wow. People are still going to gamble. It doesn't matter. In, in it fucking mental how they like the book the bookies can just cancel your account or limit your account just because you've you've you're winning bets. Yeah, that's but the the, the balls in their court, like uh, ironically. Mm. Um, so th there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it. So if you've got like if you've got uh, a gambling app. Say with bet three six five, and you're just doing normal shit bets. You're basically it's a chump bet. It's a chump account, and they, you know, they like look, look at this guy, he's absolutely feeding us money. They're the right. they're the ones they want hundreds of thousands of, yeah. Yeah, but then professional gamblers will take your account and go right. We'll buy your account off you for a grand, and you go what? Because for so long, but they will be like. <laughs> Stevie, you know what I mean, he's like, it's a tenner a week. You know what I mean, he's he's losing it, so you're just like they disregard your account. Then a professional gambler comes in and goes, actually, I'm going to take your account if that's all right. And then it goes unnoticed for a few more weeks. Going, oh, he's had a couple of lucky weeks. That's absolutely fine. And then they go in with the big bets, and it's like take all that money out, and it's like, wow. So it's um yeah, it's it's, it's a murky, murky world. You met a professional gambler who took you to the races, didn't you? Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about him? Because like, how can you be a professional? gambler in that context yeah yeah yeah. jordan um so, so he took us to the the dogs didn't he yeah and uh we we met him that morning and he was like oh, i've had a fucking great morning and like just showed us all his slips he'd won like thousands and thousands of pounds and then when we, when we went with him to catford he lost thousands and thousands of pounds <laughs> right but he does 
I think he's actually just changed. I think he's just. I think he's a, like a great British weightlifter as well. Um, so yeah, don't go slagging him off, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, he, I still chat to him every now and then, and he, you know, he has tips on horses, and you know, you can be a professional gambler. There are people. Um, the, 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 the Josh, the guy that we met, who basically we we set him a challenge like, how quickly do you think you can get my account limited? And he reckon, he said, I reckon ten bets, and it was within four bets he got it limited. By doing what? Uh, it was the, the what I was saying earlier is he was basically betting on Scottish um, uh, reserves teams and under twenty ones, and just getting inside information. And so often he would win money without even a ball being kicked because the odds are shorted before a game because he knew like who was who was going to be playing and stuff. So he is a professional gambler and. There's a there's a lot of people that are professional gamblers, mm. um, out there. There's yeah a few like companies that are set up just to try and get around the bookies and just have different people on different accounts and stuff and Mad. just watching football matches over and over again. Fucking hell! I, I I had a call about a year and a half ago from a mate who never really calls me and he was like, "This horse, this time, like one of them famous calls you get every now and then, like lump on." So I was like, really? I'm certain I was like, oh, he had some kind of insider knowledge. I never really get that with horses yeah. and that, but he did. And then, so I was like, called my dad up as well. And I was like, dad, bet on this. And the horse was, I was watching it. I was in the gym at the time. I was watching it come on. I know nothing about the races. And this horse that I'd bet on was miles and miles in front. And it fell at the end and lost. And it was just like, I, and now I have this kind of like, what's it called? Like, not superstition, but when you don't trust something, because I think... Did that guy know? Like, was like surely he was never going to know that that was going to happen. But it just seemed too written that it was like almost like a comedy sketch. Like, yeah. duh, 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 boom. Do you know what I mean? It was so I'm dead. Yeah, so 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 fucking weird. We're just there. Uh, it's not awkward, but we're like, and uh, la, 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 la. and um, translation went. Oh, apparently, you and Lionel have a friend in common. I was like, oh god, this is embarrassing. He thinks I'm Jack Black or something. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs>